My name is Lornika Joseph. Um, I am originally from the Bahamas and I am a life coach for women, speaker and consultant. And I am the CEO and founder of a coaching and consulting company called DrLornika.co. If you want to learn more, please visit DrLornika.co to connect with me. So tonight I really wanted to share, um, I felt led with different conversations, speaking with clients and just, you know, we're in the fifth month, almost in the sixth month. We know there are different persons who have, you know, goals. And if you don't have any goals that you're trying to accomplish this year or this second quarter, hopefully you do have some goals that you want to accomplish. But I wanted to talk about some of the things that will happen or that tend to challenge people or stop them on their journey to success. And so one of those things, um, that main issue is really just being able to zoom in and focus. And sometimes many of us can't seem to focus because we're paying attention to everyone else. We're paying attention to what is happening. We're paying attention to not what you know to what's not happening. Again, my name is Lornika and I'm a life coach for women. And basically my creative calling in life is to help persons like you, um, women and a few good men to not only just be able to heal your mind, body and soul, but to help you all shine personally and professionally. Because I am a true believer that what happens in your life personally, it eventually affects your relationships professionally. And so tonight I'm going to share five tips with you on how you can filter the fakeness. And that is either filtering out fake people, that is filtering out people who do not mean you well, that is filtering information that may be coming to you or just being able to filter things that are not good for your emotions. It is hindering your progress. It is hindering your success, right? So again, thank you so much for joining. So the first thing when it comes to, now I am a wordsman. In addition to being a life coach, I love words. I love studying words. I'm a woman of faith. And I believe as the Bible says, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But if you don't know the information, if you don't have the information and you don't know how to apply what it is that you are learning and you don't know how to apply what it is that you are hearing, you're not going to really experience any success. Just a little backstory of pretty much how I pretty much got started to where I am with being a life coach. My journey started with just being a broken woman. Prior to me moving to the US, I was in a really bad relationship. Um, go ahead and share this broadcast and, um, you know, hit the screens and the little guy um, across at the bottom and just share this broadcast and hit it if anything, if you're enjoying the broadcast. So basically, um, as I said, uh, pretty much born and raised in the beautiful country of the Bahamas. My journey actually started pretty ugly, right? Or as I would say, inconvenient to me at the time. One of the things that really led to the journey of inner healing for me to now where my focus is helping other women heal, whether you're a wife, whether you're a mother, whether you're a student, whether you're a friend, a daughter, whatever it is in life where you are right now, my purpose is to help you heal your mind. Because when your mind is healed, you're able to embrace what it is that God has promised you. When your mind is healed, you're not concerned about what people are doing to you and for you. When your mind is healed, you're not overwhelmed with bitterness and unforgiveness. When your mind is healed, you can focus, right? And so tonight, I want to really, and hopefully some of you, you'll be able to catch the replay, but I want you to jot out, you know, take some time to really sit down and really, you know, try not to be distracted because again, my purpose tonight is to help you. So the first thing with filtering the fakeness. Now, as I said, I am a woman, I'm a wordsman. So I love words. And so one of the things that I looked up on um, the definition for, the definition of the word fake in the dictionary means something that is not genuine. It is a counterfeit, right? That's what fake means. Something that is fake, it is not genuine. It is not the real thing. It's phony. It's a copy. It's a replica of something that you know it's not the real thing. And what I've learned as a coach to women is that most times a lot of us, especially even cooning men, we know what it is that it's not good for us, but we, st we still tend to stay on that path, right? We stay on that path of allowing people to use us. We stay on that path of allowing people to mistreat us. We stay on that path of doing things that we know in our hearts we really don't want to do. For example, some of you may be saying, well, you know, well, Dr. Nika, I always wanted to go back to school. Well, you know you're in a relationship and that person that you're dating is not interested in formal education, 
right? Or maybe you may be saying to yourself, well, Lorniki, you know, I always wanted to, you know, I'm at the place and space in my life where I want to build my faith. I want to forgive my parents. I want to finally forgive those who have hurt me, but there's just something that's holding me back. And one of the things that I want to share with you, sometimes it's not necessarily people that's holding us back. Sometimes we are holding ourselves back. So if any of this so far is helping you, um, please um, comment, um, hit the share button, and just give me some hearts if any of this is resonating with some of you, all right? Okay, good. So most times, so wherever you are in your journey, whether you are a wife, whether you are a mother, whether you're divorced, whether you're an entrepreneur on your way to an entrepreneur, or maybe you are someone who is pretty much in between, you're in between your nine to five. And let me take a station break right here because I need to say this and I will teach on this at another time. Wherever you're located, you have to be at peace and you have to be well with that decision. So one thing that I'm going to say, and hopefully this free up some of you, Everyone is not called to be an entrepreneur and everyone is not called to be an employee. I'm going to say that again. Everyone is not called to be an entrepreneur and everyone is not called to be an employee, but everyone has what it takes to have multiple streams of income. So what I'm trying to eliminate and I want you to eliminate is the thoughts that you have to be doing everything that everyone else is doing and not focusing on your journey right that's what i want you to get from that because especially in this era of social media and everyone wants to run their own business i do not as a life coach i teach my clients do not focus on what everyone else is doing you need to begin to ask yourself you need to make sure that you are asking god god what is it that you want me to do what am i supposed to be doing with my gifts what is my purpose is it just for me to go to work go to school and die and that's it and I can answer that for you. The answer is no, right? You are made for so much more. You're made, you are made for so much more. You're not just here to go to work. You're not just here to go to school. You are not just here to just pay bills. God has a unique assignment for you. And for some of you, your assignment may be in politics. For some of you, your assignment may be in the, in the medical field. For some of you, maybe you're called to be an actress. For some of you, maybe you're called to be a creative. Maybe you're, you have a business idea. Or maybe you're called to be in a publishing industry. Whatever it is, my point is your assignment does not look the same. And I want you to focus on that. Do not get lost on trying to do what everybody else is telling you to do and do what it is that God has called you to do. And that is going to take some work. So on this journey, so I'm going to share with you for the next few minutes how to feel to the fakeness. And again, let me know if any of this information is helping you. Please hit the share button, like, tap the screen. The little um, guy that's over there in the corner, please let me know if any of this is helping you. Hey, 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 thank you so much. So the first thing when it comes to filtering out the fakeness. Now, fakeness is in general, this can be fake people and this can be a fake situation, right? So again, fakeness, let's go back to it. In the beginning, the word I identified and I defined the word fake. The word fake means something that is not real, it is not genuine, it's a copy, it's a replicate, it's not the real thing. So on your journey, for many of you, especially ladies, you may be on your journey right now to fulfilling your calling, but there are certain things that are coming in your way that is hindering your progress. For example, and I'm going to use myself as an example, one of the things that I am believing God for, right, this year is marriage. For those of you that don't know, I'm a 34-year-old virgin, um, but that did not exclude me from being hurt in relationships. So um, pain does not discriminate. It doesn't care if you have a doctor degree. It doesn't care if you make $40,000, $80,000. It doesn't, pain doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care if you drive a Benz or a Honda, you live in a gated community. It doesn't matter. Every one of us, if you have been on this earth for more than five days, you have experienced pain. But one of the things that um, I like to tell people and I like to teach my clients is that pain doesn't happen to you, but it happens for you. Hi, thank you so much, Ayo. I'll say that again. Pain, it doesn't happen to you, but it happens for you. So like the Bible says, everything, everything is working out 
for your good. Now, and I can tell you, for someone who is, again, I have gone through heartache. I have gone through loss. I buried my mother at 17 years old. I've experienced really bad relationships. I've been dumped, you know, so many times. I've been denied professionally for things that I wanted and I didn't get them the first time. Then I had to go back. So I have not been excluded from pain. But what I can say is it is so important when you know who you are, when you identify your purpose, you cannot afford to entertain things that are trying to come and steal your attention and your focus. I want you to first thing again for identifying and filtering the fakeness. The first thing that I want you to ask yourself, the first thing I want you to do is evaluate where you are right now and ask yourself, am I really happy, right? So that's what I want you all to think. Exactly, delayed but not denied. Thank you, Joey, right? Evaluate, so the first thing, the first step to filtering fakeness, the first step to filtering people who are not for you, because there are some people, the Bible is very clear. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't care about your house. He doesn't care about your money. He doesn't care about how many followers you have on Instagram. He doesn't care about your platform. He doesn't care about your business. He doesn't care about your children. The devil's ultimate purpose is to make sure you are distracted so you don't fulfill your purpose in life. That is his one assignment. And I make this show from time to time. If it's one person who is very clear about his identity on the earth, that is the devil, right? It's not an energy because listen, I'm not going to go there. It's not an energy. It's not a spirit. It is the enemy, right? He is the one. There's the force of darkness and then there's a force of light. There is God and then there's the devil. That's all his focus is. His focus is to make sure you are distracted in your marriage. His focus is to make sure you're entertaining the wrong people, entertaining the wrong voices. His purpose is to make sure that your children don't get your attention. His purpose is to make sure that you eat the wrong foods and you don't get enough sleep because you're chasing money, right? Because here's the thing. If you are not well in your mind, if you are not well in your soul, you will not be able to fake filter what's fake. I'm gonna say that again. Please let me know if any of this is helping you. Please hit the share button and invite other followers. Is any of this information helping you all? And I'm gonna kind of slow down so we can just kind of recap so y'all can keep up. Okay, <laughs> thank you, AO. Thank you for the love. So again, evaluate where you are right now. And if you, when you evaluate where you are, you need to ask yourself, are you happy? Right? So again, we live in this era of social media where everybody pretty much, you know, you're just like, hey, you can just take your phone and take a selfie. Like, you know, I'm great today. Right? But I want you to really ask yourself the question, are you really happy? Are you really happy with your professional career? Do you even want to be in the field that you are in right now? Or did you join or did you go into that career field because your parents told you if you did not do this, you are not going to be living in that house anymore, right? Are you happy with your friendships? Now, I have to sit here for a little bit. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to share my experience. Are you happy with the company that you keep, right? Are your relationships, are your friendships, men and women you're dating, ladies, are you really happy with the guy you're dating? Are you happy with how you are entertaining him? For those of you who are entrepreneurs, are you really happy in your business? Are you making money or are you just pretty much just faking the funk so everybody can think that you're successful and living this great life on Instagram, right? So I'm here to help you ask the very hard questions because, again, nothing is going to happen in life until we become honest with ourselves. So for those of you that are just joined, the first thing is evaluate where you are right now and ask yourself, are you really happy? Are you really happy with your children? Are you happy with your relationship with your parents? One of the things that I share in my book, and you guys can, um, I'm going to talk later on about this. My book, Write Things Wrong Season, and you can get a copy of this. Whether you live in the Bahamas or you're in the U.S., wherever you are, you can visit brightlyawake.com. But one of the things that I share in my book is the importance of inner healing when it comes to rejection. Now, when you think of rejection, Rejection is not just someone telling you no. Rejection is literally you being faced with something that has overpowered you. 
right? So rejection can be you being dumped. Rejection can be you went to the bank or you went to apply for an opportunity and you were denied. You know, for those of you, especially for my fellow professionals here watching tonight, there are many of us who are, you know, we're pursuing these careers and we're going after these organizations and we want to be a part of quote unquote clicks and we want to be famous online because we don't really love ourselves. We're not confident. And when you are not confident, you end up doing things that people want you to do instead of you doing it because God has called you to do it. So number two, how to filter the fakeness. What action step, if you identify that you are not happy with your life, you know that guy you've been dating for almost five years, he has no intentions of marrying you, you are on your second child, you are on your fourth job, you are on your fifth business idea that has not been successful, right? You talk with people and you have girlfriends that you know good and well they don't like you, they're trying to compete with you, but yet you tolerate them. Why? Why are you in relationships? Why are you entertaining people who tolerate you instead of you celebrating them and them celebrating you? I believe as a life coach, and one of the things that I continuously teach my clients is you have to always assess and reassess at least once a month where you are. Because when we leave this earth, when you die, you leave this earth, you are going to have to answer for yourself. No one is to blame. So if you're an adult and you're not happy with yourself, you're not happy with your life, you need to start asking the necessary questions, right? If you're a woman and you're a single woman and you're dating and you want to get married, right? And you've been dating this guy for like five, seven years, like, wh what is it, right? When are you guys going to have the conversation? Or because you are, you don't know who you are, you are staying in relationships and you are staying around him because you believe there's no one out there who can really love you the way you know you need to be loved. So that ha what happens is you now are entertaining a man or woman, right, who is fake. They're not genuine. They don't really want to be with you. And ladies, I want you all to get to the place where you start to tell yourself, he's just not into me. Or he's just not into my children. He's not into my future. He just wants to have sex with me. And the sooner what I recognize is the sooner you become honest with yourself, the quicker your healing and the blessings that you are believing God for will manifest. I'm going to say that again. The sooner you are honest with yourself, the quicker your healing will take place. And the sooner your blessings and the prayers that you are believing God for will manifest. So let's go back again to the top. Number one, evaluate where you are right now. Are you happy with yourself? Totally happy. Are you happy where you are in your finances? Are you happy with your health? Are you happy with how you look and how you feel? Do you want to lose weight? Right? Do you want to get some more sleep? Do you want to overcome anxiety? Are you a woman or a man who's dealing with anxiety? Are you dealing with depression? Right? Do you need to seek therapy? If you are not happy, now is the time for you to ask yourself so you can stop sabotaging your future. Number two, when it comes to filtering the fakeness, what action step can you actually take this week? I'm not talking about creating some big goal. I want you to start small. What action step can you take this week to change the way you feel about your life and your current status right now? I'm going to pause. Let me know if any of this is helping you. Hello, Jessica. Thank you for joining. Is any of this helping anyone, ladies and gentlemen? Because I see we have a few good men on right now. Okay. Number three. So, after, so number two, after you've decided and recognized, identify what action step you need to take this week to change how you feel. Maybe you need to sign up for coaching. Maybe you need to see a therapist. Maybe you need to have that conversation with your lover. Maybe you need to talk to your spouse. Maybe you need to cut back how you're spending. Maybe you need to set an alarm so you can go to sleep on time. Maybe you need to cut that girlfriend off. You know it's just distracting you and she is always pulling you down and always calling you for something, right? Number three on how to filter the fakeness. If you identify that you are the problem or you're sabotaging your own success, I want you to open up your mouth and confess that and ask God to heal your mind. I'm going to say that again. Number three, 
If you identify that you are the problem, maybe you're fearful. Maybe you've continued to lie, um, lie to yourself. Maybe you don't believe in yourself. Maybe you believe you'll never get married. Maybe you believe you'll never, you know, stop living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you believe you're ugly. Maybe you believe no one will ever love you. Maybe you believe that you're literally just someone men want to have sex with and then they leave you. Whatever you're believing about yourself, that affects your future and that affects your ability to see who is for you and who is against you. Now, some of us may or may not know the scripture and the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But if you don't know why you're being attacked, if you don't know the weapons and the people and the things that are distracting you and your purpose, then you're going to always fall and you're never going to be successful. You're going to keep doing the same things every year over and over and over again, right? So number three, if you are the problem, if you are the reason why you're not successful, why you're not happy, why you're not making money, what is the reason? Why have you not decided to apply for that promotion on your job? Is it because you think you're not smart enough? And I'm here to tell you, you have what it takes. You are smart enough. You are beautiful. You are more than enough. You are not what your ex said about you. You are not what your baby daddy said about you. You are not what your parents said about you. If it was something negative, you are already who God needs you to be. But now is the time for you to heal your mind. It's a time for you to invest in yourself and in your emotions so that you can heal and manifest the blessings that God has for you. Number four, if people right? If you recognize it's not you, you're like, okay, Dr. Arnika, well, it's not me. I'm not the problem. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a girlfriend. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's, you know, your baby daddy. Maybe it's the, you know, a parent or an aunt or somebody, right? You're constantly ended up in arguments with this person. They drain you. Every time they call you, they want something. If people, which includes friends and family, because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, it's not that your family members don't mean well. Sometimes they're not happy in their lives. And the saying is true. Hurt people, hurt people. When you're miserable, you end up making people around you miserable. And so you don't have to put up with that. I'm giving you permission tonight as your life coach. I'm giving you permission to remove yourself or have an honest and adult conversation with the people you are in conversation with or in your sacred circle. So number four is if people and friends are dragging you down and they are not helping you on your success journey, they're not there for you, right? You're always the one who's calling. You're always the one who's spending money. You're always the one who's flying. You're always the one, you know, making the effort and your relationships or your friendships are one-sided. Then it's time for you to make a change. So some examples of that is maybe you need to visit people less, right? Visit these fake people or don't visit them at all, right? Cut them off because they're not for you. They're distracting you. Maybe you're in school or you want to go back to college and you're dating a guy and he's like, you don't need to go to school. You know, you can just hang out with me and we can just have babies. And no, I don't know about you ladies, but and men, I don't want to be broke for the rest of my life, right? I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to have anxiety every day of my life. I don't want to be depressed. I really want to experience joy. I really want to be happy. I want to have a thriving business. I want to be able to travel the world and fulfill my calling. But I can't do that if I am constantly surrounding myself with people who either bring up my past or being surrounded by people who just don't help me at all. And it's one-sided. Cut them off, right? Just cut it. And stop trying to please everyone. You cannot please everyone. And last but not least, number five, when it comes to how to filter the fakeness, and that's either fake people or fake situations or situations that are distracting you from your purpose. Set boundaries and get back on track. I'm going to say that again. Set boundaries and get back on track. Now, I'm going to give you, before we close, I'm going to give you some examples of how, um, how to set boundaries. Now, boundaries, when most people think of it, especially if your mind has not been healed, when people think of boundaries, continue to share this. Thank you so much, Darlene. Continue to share this broadcast. Um, just hit the screen if anything is resonating or if this information is helping you. Hi. So when it comes to boundaries, most of us seem to think that boundaries is a negative thing. Guess what? If you don't have boundaries as a wife, 
if you don't have boundaries as a husband, if you don't have boundaries as a daughter, as a teacher, as a friend, as a sister or a mother, you are setting yourself up for constant disappointment. I'm going to say that again. When you don't set boundaries, whether you don't, if you don't set boundaries with your money, you don't set boundaries with who you're dating and you just let people do whatever they want, call you to rescue them all the time. You, for example, I'm going to use myself. I have boundaries when it comes to my dating life and my social life, right? Now, this may not apply to everyone, but for me, my purpose is to wait until I get married to have sex and to also have children. So for me, one of my boundaries that I have in place is I don't invite men to my house, right? That's just not something that I do. I don't do the whole Netflix and chill thing because I understand going back to the beginning of this on how to filter the fakeness is that when you don't know who you are and you are thirsty, you end up doing things that you know you had no intentions of doing. So you find yourself being weak. That again, the devil doesn't care about how you look. He doesn't care about your money. He doesn't care about how many followers you have on Instagram. He doesn't care about your friends. He cares about your purpose. He wants you distracted. He wants you lying. He wants you um, cheating. He wants you living in, in, in dishonesty. He wants you so distracted looking at everybody else, creating problems for situations instead of asking God, what is my calling? Why am I here? Why did I go through this pain? Why did I go through this grief? What is it? How am I supposed to be a good mother? Why do I have children, right? What is the next step for my marriage? Do you want me to go back to school or do you want me to apply for that promotion? Do you want me to start my business or do you want me to just sit and strategize right now? What is it that you want me to do? But when we don't ask these necessary questions, we end up entertaining counterfeit people and people who distract us and then we become bitter and we become angry. Well, so-and-so, the reason why I am not in this place is because of X, Y, and Z, right? The reason why I'm not happy is because my father never did this for me. The reason why I'm not happy is because my friends don't support me. The reason I'm not happy, listen, true healing and true blessings and success comes when you stop pointing the finger at other people and you start pointing the finger back at yourself, right? I'm going to adopt Michael Jackson's theme song. You have to start looking at the man in the mirror, right? What are you saying to yourself? What have you been believing about yourself? Why, how long are you going to keep blaming people for where you are if you are unhappy? So again, how to filter the fakeness, how to filter the fake situations, and how to filter people, friends, and family who really don't mean you any good. They're miserable. They don't want the best for you. You're going to have to make some changes in this second quarter as we go into the month of June. So again, number one, evaluate where you are now and ask yourself if you are really happy. Are you happy with your marriage? Are you happy being single? Are you happy with where you are making money? Are you making enough money? Are you happy living paycheck to paycheck? Are you happy with your current weight? Do you want to lose weight or gain weight, right? Are you happy? Do you sleep at night? Are you getting six to seven hours of sleep? Or are you barely sleeping because you're worried about what people think about you? Number two, what action step can you take this week to change your feelings about how you feel about your life right now? Number three, if you are the problem, confess that out loud, say to yourself, or if you're like me, I love journals. I love writing. I'm pretty much, I have so many journals. It's crazy. So writing for me is very therapeutic. And that's pretty much how I was able to self-publish um, my book and be a consultant for others who are interested in publishing as well. But one of the things that I love, that's how I get things off of my chest is writing, writing, singing, or reading. You have to have an outlet, right? So if you are the problem, confess and ask God to heal your mind. God, heal my emotions. I'm suffering from rejection. I'm really hurting from the fact that my parents do not support me. Or maybe you're on here tonight and you say, well, Dr. Onika, I don't even know who my father is, right? And it's affecting how you date, right? You just allow any and every man into your life and into your soul. And we're going to talk about it in the coming weeks. I'm going to do a teaching on soul ties. 
You have to be very careful who you entertain and into your space. Because guess what? Sex is not sex, right? A phone conversation on your cell phone, it's not just a phone conversation. People are being distracted. And if your eyes are not open to your assignment, you are going to be distracted and then you realize you're going to be like, oh my God, how did I get here? Right? Like Deborah Cox, how did we get here? <laughs> Number three, if you have the problem again, confess that and ask God to heal your mind. Number four, when it comes to filtering the fakeness, if people, family, and friends are dragging you down, it's either time to make a decision or have a sit down conversation with them so that you can bring out the best in yourself if you're going to be around them. So for example, I gave some examples. Maybe you wanna visit less, right? Maybe you don't need to go by these friends or these people every weekend, right? Stop trying to save everyone. No is a complete sentence. You cannot swipe your credit card to save everyone's problem when you know you need help, when you know you have goals. And last but not least on how to filter the fakeness, set boundaries and get back on track. One of the things as a woman of faith and a believer, I am a true believer of repentance and change. Repentance is not just God, forgive me for getting off track. Forgive me for lying. Forgive me for doing this. Forgive me for putting my mouth on other people. Forgive me for walking in bitterness. Forgive me for disobeying you. Repentance is a process. Repentance is your heart actually changing about something that you know is unhealthy for you, your mind, your body, and in your spirit. All right? So hopefully this information was helpful. I'm going to be coming more often. And again, for those of you who are not familiar with what I do as a life coach for women and also as a consultant, visit drlornika.co to connect with me. And I go into more details with this in my book, Right Things, Wrong Season, How to Walk Away With Your Heart Wants to Stay. You can purchase this book on my website at drlornika.co. If you are in the Bahamas, you can also purchase my book, Feel free to send me a DM and if any of this has helped you or you know you want you have a question about this teaching, feel free to message me, share this, and I look forward to having another um, teaching with you all soon. And remember, it is time for you to shine personally and professionally, but you cannot do it if you are not awake and that is brightly awake. Bye everyone. Visit drlornika.co to connect with me.